Do you want to be able to use Copilot in Excel to be able to enter formulas quicker and analyze data faster so you can get insights from your data? I'm the Productivity Coach and today I show you how. Hi, I'm Stuart Redout, the Productivity Coach, and I work at Microsoft as part of our modern work AI and the ecosystem team. And today I'm going to be looking at how we can use Copilot in Microsoft Excel to help us kind of speed up some of those routine tasks that we're doing when we're analyzing and working with data. Now, this applies to Copilot for Microsoft 365 and Copilot Pro. So if you've either a business user or you're a personal user who's got that Copilot Pro uh, subscription, then this will work for you. Um, now, when we look at Copilot, lots of people are really experienced now. They've really started to get to grips with things like Copilot and Teams to be able to summarize meetings and get notes and actions and all of those kind of things, or use Copilot in things like Word or PowerPoint to be able to generate content from scratch. But where people are kind of less confident to, to dip their toe in a little bit is about Copilot for Excel. Now, currently at the time of publishing this video, Copilot for Excel is in preview. So it's still kind of always been improved and changed. But one of the things that I find when I talk to customers is that they're either super confident in Excel, so they're like a finance user or something like this, who just knows their routines and knows their formulas so quickly that actually they almost feel like the AI would slow them down in their workflow or they're not so confident in Excel and then don't really want to try using Copilot because they're not sure about whether what they get out is right or wrong or don't necessarily know what the capabilities are of Copilot. So today I'm keeping it really, really simple in a video and I'm going to show you an example with some data that I've uh, extracted from a Power App that we're working on um, that allows you to kind of put in a Copilot prompt and then it gives you some coaching on how you can improve that. But before I get into the demo, I do want to ask you to make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you get told when I release new videos. Uh, a lot of my telemetry, when I look at my YouTube statistics, I have loads of people come and visit the videos, but they don't necessarily hit that subscribe button so they don't come back again to get new content. So please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then of course like and share the content, stick it on your LinkedIn, all of those kind of things so that other people can benefit from it. So let's dive into the demo here then. So here is my spreadsheet with my extract from my app. So I've got here a column with the prompt, a column with the advice that's been given back to them, and then a score out of 100. So you can see it's not a real data rich spreadsheet here, it's actually only a little bit of data. Now, when you go to use Copilot, you might find that that Copilot icon is grayed out. Um, and if it is, you need to hit Control and T to turn this data into a table. So you can do that and then just make sure that the range that it automatically selects is correct. And then you can, once you're happy with that, you can hit OK. Or alternatively, sometimes when you click into the table and then you go to Copilot, if it, if it uh, kind of lights up there, and we just give it a moment. Um, sometimes it will recognize that the data isn't in, in a table and then it will try and help you out there. So you can see here it's saying convert this range to a table. So it's going to try and help you out here by doing that work for you. So you can see now that this data is in a table, it's changed slightly how it's formatted. But all the data is exactly the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this uh, this suggestion it's got here, which says show data insights. So this will pull insights out of your data. Now, as I say, this is quite a text heavy one, so it's not gonna be able to pull very many data insights out of here. It's only really got this column with the score here. But you can see here that it's created a frequency graph showing me what the score is that has been given. Um, and all I need to do, you can see it's here, it's even put into buckets for me. So I can click add to sheet and it will add it onto my spreadsheet. Here it is, and you can see the labels are a bit funky and they're up and down and stuff like this. So if I right click on that, then I can select move chart and then put it as a new sheet so it's a bit bigger. And I can give it a name, so I'm gonna call it frequency of scores. But what you can see here, if we look at this graph, it's actually really clever because what it's done is it's grouped those scores into buckets of 10. Now actually, if I'm honest, I'm not quite sure how I would do that or how I would approach that without creating new columns and things like this. So already, this has saved me a whole load of time. So um, so what I wanna do is add a new column now that actually shows me the bucket so I can um, do that. So I wanna add a column on the end with that bucket of data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the prompt and I'm going to say add a column 
categorizing uh, the score into intervals of 10. Okay, and then I hit send. Now you notice I've said score here, so I haven't said copilot underscore score, which is the name of the column here. But the great thing about copilot is it, it understands your data from those labels, it can kind of go, oh, he said score, but he means copilot underscore score, because it looks like the same thing here. Um, and but So what it will do now is create that formula for me. Okay, so great. So what it's done is it's uh, told me what it's going to do. It's going to put them into 10 point ranges. It told me a little bit how, how, how it's going to do that. It's given me the formula. And if I don't understand that formula, I can even click explain formula. And it tells me step by step what it's going to do. Great thing here is that gives you confidence that what it's doing is what you actually asked it to do. And if I hover over this insert column, you can see that it gives me like a ghosted preview. And then clicking it, will add it in. So you can see now that all of my scores have been put into these boundaries, where it's here, you can see 40 to 49. Actually, the following down is 40 to 49. And I can do things like, you know, there's other things like bold the first column or, or things like this. But what I want to do now is I want to highlight any scores uh, below 40, and we'll make those red. Um, and then I want that any that are above uh, maybe 70, and let's put those in green. And anything else, oops, anything else in uh, yellow or uh, yellow. I was going to say amber there in yellow. Okay, so this is conditional formatting, but again, it's just it just takes time to do that conditional formatting. But you can see here in just a few seconds, it has formatted that column for me. You can see already that it's kind of bucketed those two there into yellow. It's told me exactly what it's going to do or what it's done there. So I can be confident that it's understood what I've said, it's kind of playing it back to me. You can see here I've got some red scores where they've gone, done zero. I've got uh, this one here is 65, so it's under the range to go green. Okay, and then you can see just peeking in the bottom here, we've got some green scores here where we've got a slightly more uh, complex prompt there. Um, so it doesn't need as much guidance on how it needs to approve. So you can see there, I know this was a really simple use case. It wasn't a particularly data heavy spreadsheet. And I know that I will end up with loads of columns, uh, loads of comments rather, sorry, on this video that will say, oh, I've got a spreadsheet that's got X million rows and 50,000 columns and things like this. How can I use it on this? Um, that's not what I'm trying to show today. What I'm just trying to show today is just like an intro on how you can use it with really simple spreadsheets. It doesn't have to be massively data rich to be able to get what you want. But certainly that first graph, I'm still not sure now without having to create that additional column and then doing a frequency on that column, um, how I would have done that. That's definitely saved me loads of time. And then also that even creating the column where I'm going to bucket it between 40 and dash 49, for instance, I, I know the process that I would have to go through, but I definitely would have had to have some trial and error to be able to change that and work out what it is. So definitely, I reckon probably just using Copilot there on that spreadsheet, that, uh, on that, that probably saved me around 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes there of time, just playing around with it, setting up the formatting, putting it into those buckets. Uh, and just doing a bit of analysis for me to see where those are. So hopefully you'll find this really useful. Um, as I say, I know it was a really short one. Um, please head over to my channel and look at some of the other Copilot videos I've got there. I've got videos for Copilot for Microsoft 365. I've got Copilot Pro videos for like home users. Um, and of course, I've got some videos on how you can use Copilot free on the web uh, if you don't even have a Copilot subscription. So hopefully you found this a useful video and I'll see you again on another video.